All right, welcome to the Ivory's Break It Down series. This is a five part all you need to know to play the piano and accompany yourself singing series. I'm Jenny, your favorite music teacher, and today we're gonna to do five things in this 10 minute session. We're gonna learn two more notes to complete our full scale. We'll even talk a little bit about chromatic scale and what that is, what it means to music. We're gonna learn what a melody is, how to identify it in a song and be able to play it in our right hand also. We're also gonna learn arpeggiated chords and demystify this myth of what an arpeggiated chord is, how we can listen to it, hear it, identify it, and actually play it to change genres and add it to the mix. And then lastly, intros and outros, how we can pick themes of pre-existing songs, place them at the beginning at the end, make our own signature sound, how we can identify those and use that in our arsenal of music tools. Now, if you're ready to do all of this in 10 minutes, go grab your keyboard, find your spot, and let Let's get started. Now we're looking at melody. Melody is one of the two most important parts of the song, melody and rhythm. And in this case, instead of writing down our melody like you would on regular sheet music, we are going to sing the melody. It's really a singer's tool, Ivory's, and so that you can sing or your group or friends or let's say an instrumentalist can play the melody while you accompany, okay? Now to do this, we would sing the melody and identify what that is. The most important part that pianist, accompanist need to know is to identify the melody. Now in this case, we already know this melody very well. I don't think anyone on the planet uh, isn't familiar with this song. Um, we would find it, and in this case, we would want to hear it in our head and play it, the notes on the keyboard. So, and in this case, we'd sing, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Now, without any notes, find those notes and play it. And you'd have to hear it, find your way around the keyboard to hear it. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle. Here it is, jingle all, where's all the Jingle all the way, all the way. You Just like I did that process of hearing it and matching it. So you'd have to sing it, hear it, internalize it first. Um, let's do the next part. So let's try to hear it and sing it. Oh, what fun it is to ride. Now we'd locate it on our keyboard. Oh, what fun it is to ride. Okay, we know that part because those are only two notes. And it says, in a one horse open sleigh. So we'd have to sing, in a one horse open sleigh. Sleigh, sleigh. There's your note, sleigh. So by trial and error, I just wanted to show you the process and how to hear it and be able to put it on your keyboard so that you can do both, sing and play, and know where the melody is, okay? So it's very important for singers, very important for the pianist to understand where the melody lies, how to recreate that on your keyboard. We're gonna continue with three more notes so that we can continue this scale, and that's just a series of seven notes. We've already got our first five. We're gonna add these last three. We stopped at G, we're gonna go A, B, C, and if we were to write it down, it would look like this, A, B, C. So after G goes A, B, and C, and we have a seven note scale. So technically this isn't a new note. This is really, that seventh note is the same as the middle C, except it's just a little bit higher where we recreate the series again. Just like you would learn from one to 10, you learn number 11, which is basically one again on a different level, right? We are doing the same thing. So if we sound it out, and I encourage you to play it and sing it at the same time, it sounds like this, C, D, E, F, G. Now here's our new notes, A, B, C, and going backwards, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Now to add to that, let's add numbers. To make it even easier, instead of C, we'd use the number one, and it'd sound like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. These numbers are gonna help you with chords and harmonizing later on. So take some time to review the numbers and sing and play those numbers as well as your letters to get familiar with these pitches. Now, how do these numbers and tones affect us chromatic scale? Now, as you've seen on our keyboard, you'll notice that we are only playing with these white 
notes at the bottom here, but there are five black notes. So if you look here, you're going to see that there is a black note that separates this and another black note here and another black note here and another black. So randomly within this seven, these seven notes here, you've got five other tones that we haven't discussed. And these represent a full chromatic scale. And what that means is if you tilted the keyboard as if you're walking up a ladder, or rather if you've gone rock climbing before, you have your right foot setting, then you put your, a setting for your left foot, there's a setting for your, your right foot as you move up, and the setting for your left foot. In the same way, this is what this scale does. To go up incrementally in small half tones, rather. So how will we need this when we play as an accompanist? One, to get a full scope of understanding of where our melody lies, and two, to be able to embellish later on on how to use a chromatic scale as you embellish playing as an accompanist. So let's take a look at intros, intros and outros, basically our theme, our main melody or a small snippet riff or hook that belongs at the beginning at the end to preface someone to hear and identify these main components while they're playing. And in simple terms, it's basically uh, the main theme of the song. So in the song Make Me Cry by Noah Cyrus and Labyrinth, they do this part at the beginning. And this, the main theme is presented so that the listener can listen for that main theme. Um, in this song, Chao Adios, they do this four-part intro. Same with the song, Stay by Zed and Alicia Cara, or any other song will have a main chord pattern presented so you can hear and identify this main theme. It'll sound in this particular situation like this. Then when the singer comes to sing it, you'll hear, Ask you once, ask you twice now. There's lipstick on your collar. So once the melody is presented, you already have a basis of where it's going and you can be kind of familiar with it once it enters. Take the song Jingle Bells. So before we sing this song, in a very simple setting, I would play. Jingle Bells and we go right into the song. At the very end of the song where they sing, Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh, I would go. To, as an outro, just to complete the song. So that is an example of an intro and an outro. Arpeggiated chords are a fancy term to signify a separation in this song by Christina Aguilera and Great Big World say something. We have chord, 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 chord. We're playing it in some kind of rhythm pattern, okay? Now in an arpeggiated form, we would separate the chord. So it would sound like this. One. We would separate the chord instead of playing it all together simultaneously, we would separate it to say something I'm giving up on you. And we would separate, we would arpeggiate a chord. When we did this song, you can make it either a regular jingle bells, nice and fun and fancy as you would play a guitar, or you can do jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. And you're just randomly choosing any chords, any one of these, separating the chords. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Arpeggiating is simply separating the sounds. It's that simple. All right, great work. Now our next lesson, stay tuned for part four. We're gonna learn these four things. We're gonna learn the last five notes. Where have these notes been so that we can complete our chromatic scale? How do we use it as an accompanist? We're gonna learn to harmonize. How can we do this with the chord system? Well, you're in luck because the colors on the ivory system make chords very easy so you can harmonize easily just by looking at them. We're also gonna look at how to play outside of 
the melody so that you can accompany yourself like the real pros do. And I'll give you some tips on how to do that. And lastly, invention. And it's just a fancy way of being able to play these chords in a way that is how the real professionals do it. So come join us for part four and learn how to do all these things. In the meantime, keep tickling those ivories.